kindly be seated. Thank you very much. In moments like this, you clearly see, you know, you feel, you realize that God is absolutely wonderful. I mean, you can't fully describe God. So let me begin my response by thanking Pastor David and Pastor Sarah and all the pastors of Dominion City for organizing this. Thank you all. To take time, come out of your beds this early and to lay this up. I'm sorry, lay this out. I want to, we want to thank all of you. Um, when you're 73, like I turned this morning, you want to... You remember so many things, and I would like the gentleman who is projecting the scriptures to please project Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 10, in the King James Version, Jeremiah 10, 10. Yes. The morning after I gave my life to Christ, you know, I had uh, spoken to God, you know, that day. Then the following morning, the Lord spoke to me and led me to a bookshop where I saw a book titled The Living God by R.T. France. In that book, he discusses Jeremiah 10, 10, describing God. He said, but the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. This was my introduction into the scriptures to introduce, begin the introduction to God. I read that book. I read entire scriptures just to learn about this God. And ever since, ever since, God has proved this particular scripture to be true in the present continuous tense in our lives. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and everlasting King. Now, the second thing I want to share with you is this. Uh, please project Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. Second Chronicles 20, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, this is Jehoshaphat, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, please, say with me, praise the Lord, for his mercy endured forever. Let's do it again. Praise the Lord, Lord for his, his mercy, mercy endured, endured forever. forever. A third time. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord for his, his mercy endured, endured forever. forever. Now, this was the battle cry of Jehoshaphat and the army of Israel when God said they should go forward and confront the three armies that had come against them. 
as they sang this song, two of the armies fought one another and, you know, got cleared. And then the two joined and finished the third one and everybody was dead. And they went on for four days, the children of Israel, to collect the spoils. Now, this praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever summarizes the goodness, the faithfulness of God to the nation of Israel. It summarizes who God is and what God does when his people are surrounded by enemies. It projects the power of God. And as I give this vote of thanks, we have a lot to be grateful to God for. Like some of you know, we've been married for the last 45 years. And God has blessed us. Uh, let me say this. I want to appeal to whoever is listening this morning here and around the world. If you're married, if you're going to get married, make sure that God is allowed to lead you. God is so good. And there are things about God you will never get to know unless they are manifested in your marriage. There are things that, this is the first institution that God created on earth. The first institution. And it was upon that institution that he, the Bible says, he blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth and have dominion. This is the first government the f this is God's plan and pattern for dominating the world, having dominion, exercising authority in the world. And God has blessed us and continues to bless us with, in his mercy, a wonderful union. Now, let me also say that the good hand of God has been upon us. And for that we give thanks. And the gentleman who is projecting the scriptures, can I ask you to project Ezra chapter 7 verse 6? Ezra chapter 7 verse 6. Ezra 7 6. This Ezra went up from Babylon. And he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests. Now read with me the last two lines. According to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Please project verse 9. Ezra 7 verse 9. But upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon and on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem. Read with me the last two lines. According to the good hand of his God upon him and had extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes and I was strengthened as what? The hand of the Lord my God was upon me. Now let's go to Ezra chapter 8, verse 18. Ezra 8, 18. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding of the sons of Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sherebiah with his sons and his brethren, 18. Let's look at Ezra 8, 22. Ezra 8, 22. I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers 
and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way because we had spoken unto the king saying the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him but his power and his wrath is against them that forsake him. Finally Ezra 8 31, 31. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem. Again he says, and the hand of our God was upon us and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy and of such as lay in wait by the way. Now, these scriptures summarize our testimony with God. The good hand of God has been upon us all the way. The good hand of God has been upon us. And I want you to understand that that means so, so, so many things. Now, finally, Ezra chapter 6 verse 20, no, Ezra chapter 5 verse 5. Ezra chapter 5 verse 5. Now look at this, it says, But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, that they could not cause them to cease till the matter came to Darius. And then they returned answer by the letter uh, concerning this matter. The eye of God has been upon us. So that whatever opposition that came as, as, as has come against us from every source, they've not been able to stop us from being who God wants us to be and God, you know, being doing what God wants us to do. The eye of our God, that's our testimony, has been upon us. Ezra chapter 6, verse 22. Now look at this, it says, And kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy, for the Lord had made them joyful, and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them, to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. You know, one of the things that we've experienced is that God turns the hearts of Various people, various authorities that we've had to deal with to help us. And that's part of our testimony, which we're sharing with you on a day like this. Finally, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13. Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13. Now, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected day. Let's stop there. You've heard this morning by information from two witnesses the thoughts that God has been thinking concerning us. That's part of our testimony. And that's part of the reasons why we have been delighted that you've come out this morning to share uh, this testimony with us, you know now part of the thoughts that God has been thinking towards us, thoughts of good, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give us an expected end. I'm sure you'll say a few words. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, I've been thinking of what testimony to give because there are so many of them. They could fill a book. But the one that came to my mind was when we were traveling, we went to Guatemala to see Almolonga, a place where the whole of the people became Christians. They demolished their idols, and we saw carrots bigger than this, my hand, and I'm telling you the truth. So, carrots, yeah. yes. When they did their deliverance, um, their uh, produce began to grow very big. There was nothing they did. America sent people to come and investigate, and they found out that there was nothing special. It was God. So we just finished from there and went to the airport. We, want to, we wanted to go back to the U.S. From there, we go back to Accra. Then 
we had chatting nicely, and we were just sitting down. Then he said to me, I want to have a cup of coffee. I said, okay. So I sat down and he went. I, he said as he was going, I think you asked somebody or he just saw you. Yeah, no, 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 I went. The Lord he, said, go and see Go this and see this person. So he went and spoke to him. We, we, are, we have this ticket. This is our body. We are traveling. To, and the man took the ticket and looked at it and said, I think he called me, and he said, two of you, you are, you are Mission. missionaries. I can see you are missionaries. I want to help you. This flight that they put you on is not going to go. There is going to be tornado over the whole city. So the last flight that we go is not this one. This one will not go. And he took our ticket our boarding pass, went somewhere and came back and called us again and gave us two new boarding passes. He said to us, go and sit somewhere. Just go, go find somewhere and sit quietly. When they call this flight, just go up. Don't talk to anybody. And we thanked him. We went and sat and turned our backs to everybody. And then when they called the flight, we quietly followed them. The rest of the people that we checked in with, they were sitting there. It was not their flight. So we quietly followed them, and they checked us into the plane. When they looked, he had put us in first class. Oh. And let, let me... Let for, okay, <laughs> finish it. <laughs> let me add that for I was short. We were short. Yes. So I looked at the seat number, looked at the ah, everything. Is <laughs> we sat down, you know, with one side of the buttocks, just, <laughs> just in case they asked me to move. <laughs> they closed the doors, and we went, you know, the flight left for Houston. And do you know, after that flight, there was no other flight for the next three days. Three days. All the other people slept in the airport through the storm, the tornado, and everything for three days. And I remember now, we, when we were in Accra, when we lived in Accra, my wife and I were traveling back from Lagos to Accra. And again, we had gone to the boarding gate, but the flight was delayed for like two and something hours. And we went a little, you know, back to get some refreshment. As we were, you know, coming, walking that long, um, you know, gangway, my phone rang. So I brought it out and I answered, hello. The voice said, are you not a maker one? I said, yes, that's my name. He said, your flight is about to, to leave for Accra. You're about to miss your flight. So we broke into a run. We started running. By the time we got to the gate, the aircraft had pushed back. So when we got to the front of the gate, the source, they opened the door. We ran down the stairs, climbed into the plane, and were the last people to get into our seats. And I, of course, we were sweating. They closed the door again, and the plane backed out, and we went to Accra. When I now tried to call that number, number again to thank, to thank the person, the voice said, this number, number does not does exist. Not exist. This number, this number does, does not, not exist. exist. I, I knew an angel it had was called. An angel. Now, when you was when the choir was singing a free say, oh yeah, oh, yeah na na, na yeah, yeah, wa oh, oda, yeah. that's one of these songs we learned yeah, in, in Ghana. Ghana. My my my, you know, my hair stood up. 
You can see I don't have too much now. <laughs> I bobbed it the other day. But it's like it's been like that from time to time. This God is fantastic. This God is wonderful. You know, by the time we spent 10 years in Ghana when God asked us to go and live there and came back, one of the things that the Lord said to my wife was this. He says, if anything is difficult, remember that I am the, the God, God who took you to Ghana and, and brought, brought you back, back alive. alive. Let alive. me close. Let me close this testimony session by sharing with you how God delivered me a few months ago. My wife and I had gone to Omoahia. We were invited by Masters Vessels Group MVG. And we arrived the day before and suddenly in the morning when we were going to go for the first session, we had finished having breakfast. I came out of the door, turned right to go downstairs in the hotel. I started vomiting suddenly. And for 48 hours, it was, it was total, complete, this, you know, distress. complete distress. That first day, I think I vomited about eight, eight times. times. I, don't, I couldn't understand it. And it came out later that some people had said that I would never step near the pulpit of that church and that I wouldn't go back to alive. Abuja alive. That was what we heard later. So my wife, we ran to one of my former secondary school classmates who is a doctor. They gave me intramuscular injection. It didn't work. On the way back to town, we vomit, I vomited. My wife was cleaning everything, blowing air into my ears, pouring water on my face, doing all kinds of things. When I would come out of the car, I would stagger. And I would have to hold the pillars and the banisters and the railing to go upstairs. We prayed. The little we could pray. I mean, the, all the building was turning like that for two days. Then, the third morning, my phone rang and Pastor David called me and he said, are you in the village yeah, or are you in town? I said, please, please, I am in so-and-so hotel. He says, we are on our way to Abakalike and I should have traveled to that Abakalike with him. But he says, I will come and see you. And he had passed that point on the road in Omoaya. He turned around himself and uh, came up to now, let me tell you something about prophetic praying. He prayed like fire. And he prayed, covered, you know, all the gamut of life. Dealt, you know, with sorceries and things and so on and whatever what it was in Umwahe that was causing the problems and the sickness and the attack and all of that and dealt with various things. By the time he finished praying, I was well. I was completely well. All I needed was to recover a little more strength. And strangely enough, whenever I got to the pulpit to preach, I was fine. I mean, if, if I, you heard me preaching, you wouldn't know anything was wrong. But the moment I finished and turned to move back, I would be staggering, you know, like that. But that was it. So the Lord knows how to raise hell 
to help us every step of the way. Praise the Lord. Now, let's bow our heads and let me pray. Father, I want to thank you for this solemn moment. Lord, I want to thank you for your faithfulness to us all of these many years. Lord, I pray that you will remember the leaders of intercessors for Nigeria, intercessors for Africa, Dominion City Church, Nigeria Praise, Wailing Women Worldwide, the Apostolic Coalition, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, uh, Winners Church, the Anglican Communion, the Pastors and Ministers Prayer Network, the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, the Church of Christ, the Body of Christ, all Christian professionals in Nigeria, all Nigerian Christians in diaspora, and all those who are working for a better Nigeria, Christian Missionary Foundation, Capro, and all the independent Christian churches. We pray for them at this time and ask that your promises concerning every one of these would not fail. Lord, we pray that your hand, the good hand of God, will be upon all of these people, all of these leaders, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And finally, that you will enable each and every one of them to fulfill your calling upon their lives concerning this nation and this generation. This is our prayer, and we ask it in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Yair Adonai pana v'lecha v'yichuneka. Yisa Adonai pana v'lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.